Check out the instructor's comments at the end of this video for more info. All right, we're gonna do every mechanic should know again, uh, and that's on checking oil levels. So we're gonna do a, a typical sight glass motorcycle here. And I'm gonna kind of back up here so you guys can see how this bike is tied down on the lift. And you can actually see that it's significantly pulled off to the left side. So our problem is, is that per the owner's manual, of uh, this motorcycle, it needs to be straight up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and straighten those tie downs first. All right, now we got this bike nice and level. Just get a good top shot here, and that's going to be important for us to do what Suzuki tells us to do. And now with the bike level, you see here how you can actually see the oil level now. But it, when we were looking at it before, didn't it look like? the oil glass was actually full mm -hmm. okay so here's what i want to make a point of we've got the l and the f on metric vehicles the distance between there is worth half a quart or you guys might be using a ratio right cup that's 500 cc's or 500 milliliters makes sense so right now you can see we're not too bad the bike's pretty level and we're about how low half of the sight glass would be a quarter of a quart exactly we're about a quarter of a quart Okay, or 250 cc's if you thought that, because remember this is 500. So we're about quarter quarter. That's not too bad, right? If I find that, I'm not gonna be severely worried. What I wanna do is let's get two people to release the tie downs. We'll get somebody to hold the motorcycle. And I'll show you that if I'm ever unsure, like it seems like there's no oil in the sight glass at all. This is the dangerous one because it looks like it's full. And the illusion that I'm talking about is because of that stained color there where you have that oil it looks like fresh oil in that window right there and so you get this overconfidence where technicians say oh oil's full and there and it's really extremely low because there's nothing registering on that window at all all right we went ahead and released uh the ratchets here now anthony as you're holding the bike i want you to go ahead and pu pu keep pulling it to your left there and you'll see the oil is actually going out of the sight glass now come back my way and it'll, it'll slowly start to fill up here. And go ahead and go too far my way. Okay, stop right there. All right, too high oil level has its own problems. Number one, we'll just think of it from the performance point that too high oil level will drag on the crankshaft, and that's not desirable, reducing power and performance. And then the other thing is, is that probably the more common complaint is it'll run through the breather system into the airbox, run back through the engine, the excess oil will follow the spark plugs having short life and start to draw its own problems from there, often mis misdiagnosed as a fuel system problem or whether fuel injected or carbureted, a mechanic will often look at fouled plugs and think, oh, I, I've got this fuel problem when really it could be too high an oil level. Hold the bike right there. Now I got a I got an overfilled oil position. I want you to go ahead and just slightly go to the left. I want to I want to find that sweet spot. Keep going, keep going, right there. Okay, that little bit of space in the sight glass, that's what you want. That is that is a, a good filled crankcase. If you can't see that little air above there, you have too much oil in there. We want to see air above the sight glass. Let, don't move the bike, and I wanna show you, in this position where we show the bike at a proper oil level, you could see here, I'm gonna have to go around probably to the front. Okay, great. guys, this is great. It is barely off to the right, just a few degrees past center, but it's giving us a false indication that the oil level is okay. So if we look at that sight glass in this position, what are we going to tell our customer? It's yep, it's good. Don't need to worry about it. Now go ahead and pull it the other way. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So about there, we're going to show, we'd show a customer that their oil level was too low and what would we end up doing? We'd end up overfilling because we'd add oil. So what we're saying every mechanic should know is that we need to make sure that we know how to check the oil, how to inspect it. And this whole level thing is super important. I'll add one other little bit that we've talked about before so you guys have this in the class is another thing we're in a shop that has a pretty level floor 
So the bike is level this way. Um, I had a situation one time with a customer who kept checking their oil on a really, really steep driveway. And they would say that their oil level is way off because obviously that was on, they were checking it on that steep driveway. Uh, we'll do another video on uh, motorcycles with dipsticks and we'll repeat this process. Some of you may be asking yourself, how could anybody ever do this wrong? Come on, it's just checking oil level, right? Well, let's answer that question. How is it that oil level is, is such a problem in our dealerships with our customers? One thing, not reading the owner's manual. That's what it comes down to. And second thing would be making assumptions, which, you know, we just modeled how to check oil level on this one common type of sight glass system on metric vehicles. And that is to have the bike level on, you know, uh, straight up, straight up and down and to check the oil level. Now, the thing that we didn't discuss is whether that service manual said to run the engine and then let it sit for a certain amount of minutes. And that is another issue. People will just simply check the oil level and then choose to add oil or say it's overfilled or whatnot and really not know what the manufacturer calls for. There are bikes out there that the owner's manual literally says, uh, start the vehicle, let it run for three to five minutes, and they specify three to five minutes. It doesn't say a while, it says three to five minutes. And then they say, shut the bike off and let it sit for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Are you maybe wondering right now what your bike, what your model says, and, and uh, what the actual procedure is? Because if they want that to sit for 10 minutes, that means that it takes a long time for that oil to drain back through the engine, get to the sump, and get it to that proper level. So my, you know, in summary point here is, is that every single vehicle out there, let's, I mean, small engines, you know, uh, motorcycles, autos, I mean, I don't care, whatever, it's just all nuts and bolts. You really need to read the owner's manual to find out the specific procedure for that model. There is no such thing as Suzuki's, Honda's, Kawasaki's, Harley's. I mean, Harley has different ways to check between whether it's a bagger or soft tail, some are checked up and down, some are checked on the side stand. I just can't stress this enough that this is realistically a very, very simple task, often overlooked. And I'm going to tell you from having past employees and students, when you aren't diligent about this, number one, you just cause problems. And number two, man, it's hard to trust the fact that you'll do the other stuff. If you skip on the simple stuff, you're probably going to skip on reading the service manual and knowing the proper procedures for torque and assembly and, I mean, just so many other things that go with it. So I want to motivate you. I want to encourage you to pick up those owner's manuals, service manuals, read them, understand, have product knowledge. If you're just a consumer, you know, learning about your own motorcycle and what to do, there's a great information inside that owner's manual. Read about it. Check it out. So anyway, make it great. Keep on wrenching.